I'm Sarah Gordon, Chief Executive of the UK's Impact Investing Institute. Thank you all very much indeed for joining us today to mark the first year in the life of the Institute and to look to the future of impact investment. This year has been a pretty awful one for everyone. For some people, it's been a tragic one. The pandemic has had a horrendous effect on individuals, communities and economies across the globe. But this year has also brought some good things, positive developments that we can build on and which show us how important it is to continue working towards our goal, mobilising private sector capital at scale for public good. For a start, virtual working has had its upside. I've been lucky enough to spend most of this year working from Exmoor in the southwest of England. As a team, we've been able to work more flexibly and we've reached more people. When we launched the Institute in Sheffield last November, we committed to being relevant for the whole of the UK and the investment community internationally, not just in London where we were based. Little did we know that a year later we would be reaching so many people through webinars, Zoom calls and the panoply of tools which we now use to communicate with each other across the world. There are other positive things that have happened this year. More money has flowed into sustainable investment funds than ever before, showing that people want their money to deliver benefits for people and the planet, as well as a financial return. Five influential organisations have said they intend to work towards one set of global sustainability standards, making it easier for businesses, investors and individuals to report, compare and manage their impact on people and the planet. Earlier this week saw the launch of the Scottish National Investment Bank, which has a focus on supporting Scotland's transition to net zero and also extending a quality of opportunity through improving places. Across the pond with the appointment of John Kerry as the new US President's Special Envoy for Climate, there is the imminent prospect of the US re-entering the 2015 Paris Agreement on Climate Change and re-engaging with the climate and re-engaging with the international community to address the climate emergency. This year was also the year when social justice and racial equity became a boardroom discussion. When many senior business leaders thought constructively about their responsibilities to society and their impact. It's also been a year which has given us a renewed sense of the power of community action. We have experienced the strength of our human connections and what collaboration can achieve. Our partnership with other organisations and within the Impact Investing Institute, where volunteers work alongside paid staff, has delivered concrete results over the last 12 months. Earlier in November, the UK government committed to issuing the first in a series of green gilts, a financial instrument that will direct private capital and government spending towards a net zero carbon future, helping to create green jobs across the country. In collaboration with others, we provided input to this decision, showing that there was appetite in the market from asset owners such as pension funds and asset managers for sovereign bonds that combine environmental with social impact. This work was one example of the Impact Investing Institute delivering on what it set out to do, connecting investors better with impact investment opportunities and with government, lowering the hurdles that stop impact investment from happening. This year, the pandemic, like crises before it, has also spurred innovation in finance. Investment funds and financing vehicles which will promote a fair economic recovery have been launched by private and public sector investors working together to make their capital more effective. I'm thinking of the Resilience and Recovery Loan Fund run by Social Investment Business, which has channeled emergency government money to social investors and enterprises. Of the MacArthur and the Ford Foundations, which issued social bonds in the corporate bond market for the first time, raising billions of dollars so they could make more emergency grants to struggling communities and charities of the new investment trust just launched by Big Society Capital and Schroders, which for the first time will allow most private investors to access private social impact investments. Innovation like this, investment by both the private and the public sector, which addresses inequality, addresses the climate emergency, delivers positive impact alongside a financial return, will make us stronger, delivering more resilient communities
communities, societies and economies. If everyone had access to running water, to decent jobs, to affordable healthcare, to adequate housing, the pandemic would be cutting far less of a destructive swathe. The fact that 800 million of the world's population does not have access to clean running water is not just a persistent injustice. It is also an inequity that worsens the impact of a disaster such as this. The pandemic has shown us that crises can hit the whole world almost without warning. It's been a year when we felt our vulnerability as communities, as countries and as the planet. It's been a tough year, but one that has spurred us to action and that has given added momentum to our work. So I'm very pleased that so many people have joined us today so that we can talk to you about this work. And we also hope to hear from you, our audience. Each of our live sessions will have time for Q&A and we encourage you to post your questions in the Q&A feature, which we all now know so well at the bottom of your Zoom window. If you don't have a question yourself, you can comment on and upvote other people's question, questions, which is great for showing us which ones are important to you. The chat is open. Please do introduce yourselves to each other. Be great to hear who we have with us today and where you're dialing in from. I also need to let you know that the event is being recorded and you will be able to find recordings of each session on our website in the coming days. Our website, and a new one of which went live earlier this week, is also the place to find out more about our work. It's where you'll find our newly launched Learning Hub, an open source learning platform for impact investing, as well as more information about our proposal for a Green Plus Sovereign Bond, our four good governance principles for pensions, and our vision for impact reporting. Next year is likely to be as busy as the last one has been for the Institute. There is a real opportunity with COP26, the UN's climate change conference next no November, and the UK's leadership of the G7 next year, for the country to showcase its credentials in sustainable finance, for the city to demonstrate its capacity for innovation and its competitive advantage in this growing market. COP26 is much on the mind of our first speaker today, one of a number of great speakers we have at today's event, who are driving this agenda forward, transforming thinking about how finance can support a green and just recovery. Mark Carney, the former governor of the Bank of England, is now advising the UK government on green finance as it prepares to host COP26. He's also the UN Special Envoy for Climate Action and Finance. We're very pleased to have him as our first speaker today. Thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoy the event and I now hand over to Mark.